Hi there, my name's Dr Jenna Ross from UK Agritech Centre Crop Health and Protection and today I'm going to give an overview of our game-changing project entitled Slugbot where we're developing a robot that can go out into the fields and monitor for slugs and then use that data to spot treat with biological control agents. This project is led by the UK Agritech Centre Crop Health and Protection and works alongside SME's small robot company Cosmonio and farming enterprise AV and Enley. Now there are an estimated 35,000 species of terrestrial gastropod mollusks or slugs and snails in the world, making them one of the most successful and diverse animal groups in the terrestrial ecosystem. Now I often get asked what the difference is between slugs and snails and quite simply, the snail has a large exterior shell which it can retract into, whereas the slug has evolved from the snail to either lose its shell altogether or to have what we call a vestigial shell which is encapsulated within the body. Now there are some exceptions to the rule. This guy here is a testicellidae. He has a small shell at the tail end of his body, but he is classed as a slug because he cannot retract into that shell. Now slugs are one of the number one agricultural pests in the UK and they can target a wide range of crops, including oilseed rape, wheat, a variety of vegetable crops, even pasture. As well as having a direct impact on crops, slugs can also have an indirect impact as an intermediate host of parasites such as the rat lungworm. This can be passed from rats through to slugs through the feces, and then this can be then transmitted to fresh produce. If that fresh produce isn't washed properly before consumption, it can be then transmitted to humans, which can result in non-recoverable meningitis. Now, current methods of control rely heavily on chemical molluscicide pellets, such as metaldehyde and ferric phosphate. And what we've seen is an over-reliance on metaldehyde in recent years, resulting in a negative impact on our environment, on water systems and on non-target organisms. And this has resulted in the recent announcement back in September and the ban of sales of metaldehyde in the UK, which will come into effect as of the 31st of March 2021. So there's a massive demand for alternative novel slug control systems. Now, biological control is also available for slugs, however, this is not financially feasible to date in arable systems. So this project aims to overcome these challenges by developing an autonomous slug monitoring system with a precision approach to biological control. In order to get this project active during lockdown, I'm busy setting slug traps here on the family farm in order to gather slug specimens which will be sent to the laboratory at a later date for imaging. Now, in order to set these traps, I use a refuge, such as a plastic lid or a plant pot saucer. I use an attractant under the refuge in order to lure the slugs in, and this can either be dry dog food or chicken feed. I use a rock and I put this on top of the refuge in order to stop it from flying away. And then I mark my trap with either a plastic or a wooden stake, and this helps to find the trap at a later date. Now, slugs are usually active in the evening or in overcast days, so this is the best time to recheck the trap. As well as being agricultural pests, slugs are also pests in horticulture and in gardens. So if you're interested to see what slugs you have in your garden, you can recreate this trap using basic household items already described. And then you can identify the slugs using morphological features. There are a number of morphological features we can use to identify slugs. This includes the head, the mantle, which is the front part of the slug, the tail, the keel, which is a raised ridge that extends from the end of the tail, we can turn it over and we can look at the foot sole to see what colour it is and what colour of mucus it produces. We can look on the right hand side of the slug to see the position of the pneumostome, which is its breathing hole. And we can also look at the head and look at the ocular tentacles and the sensory tentacles. In addition, we can look to see whether the slug has any lateral bands or any other predominant features. Once we collected enough slugs, we moved on to the multispectral imaging phase. And this is where we use a piece of equipment called a videometer, where we can look at 19 different wavelengths from UV through to near infrared and fluorescence. And this can be used to distinguish and quantify features not seen with the naked eye, producing a unique spectral signature for the slugs. We then use this data to then train the artificial intelligence capability. The next phase of the project is to combine the multispectral imaging data, the artificial intelligence and the robotics capabilities, and then trial the slug mapping capabilities within glasshouse and field conditions. We then move on to the precision spraying capabilities of the robot and trialing these using biological control agents for slugs. 
The project is due to run until December 2021, producing a prototype as the main deliverable. The outputs of the project have the potential to have a significant impact on the UK economy by helping farmers achieve increased yields through enhanced slug monitoring and control. The project also brings environmental benefits by opening a wider market for biological control agents, thus reducing the reliance on the likes of metaldehyde. The project is also a great example of how different disciplines of science and technology, such as malacology, which is the study of slugs and snails, can come together with others such as biological control, crop protection, artificial intelligence, robotics and fine phenotyping. They can all come together to have a direct impact within agriculture to increase productivity and sustainability. Many thanks for your attention and if you'd like to know more about Slugbot or any of the projects at Crop Health and Protection then please get in contact at the following contact details or social media channels. And I'll look forward to taking your questions in the Q&A session. Thank you.